The Grain Products Company of St. James expanded operations in 1945. And Mr. Richard Zirklin, the owner-director, erected the present six-story structure. The Grain Products Company is a versatile operation which can handle volume orders of custom mix and also produce standardized batches of feeds under the well-established Rainbow label. Dick Zirklin likes to keep in touch with customers like Dwayne Stack. His employees know what has to be done, and Bill Scarchbett does it as he loads a sack of processed grain into the customer's truck. The plant was designed and built by the Hoganson Construction Company of Minneapolis. An outstanding feature is the use of storage bins with multiple distribution, enabling them to be brought into use for separate production needs. From the weighing scales, all grains are taken directly to the basement. Small grains are then elevated to large storage bins, extending through the fourth and fifth floors. Before the grains are ready for the grinding mills, they are passed through a magnetic scalper feeder that removes plant metals and foreign matter and guarantees an even flow of materials through the grinders. The pulverized grain is then blown to collectors at the top of the plant, where it is placed in direct-to-bins, mixer bins, and sacking and storage bins. Capacity of the mill is rated at around 200 tons, which means it is able to handle 200 tons of different mashes and feeds daily. The outstanding feature of the complete operation is the versatility of bins, which enables a continuous flow of material through the plant at all times. Rosendale Lutheran Church is not within the township of St. James, but several residents of St. James are among its parishioners. This church is regarded by most of the townspeople as one of the typical examples of early American church design. The plain lines of the steeple and of the church itself stand out amid the rolling farmland in which it is set. Pastor Jobog lives in St. James and officiates at the Rosendale Church. In 1863, a young Swedish boy gave his life in one of the battles between the settlers and the Sioux and the Chippewa tribes. His name was Old Boxrood. The Indian Wars have long been over, and Old Boxrood's remains are now buried in the cemetery in this peaceful countryside that was once the scene of so many bloody battles. Anton Jorgensen, a descendant of the original Jorgensen family, decided that something should be done to honor the memory of this heroic boy. And it was he and his friends that took the donations that ultimately raised the stone over the remains which were placed in the grave at Rosendale Cemetery. The story of young Old's heroism is this. In the fall of 1862, the Indians went on the warpath without warning. Old volunteered for the hazardous mission of breaking through the hostile Indian lines that surrounded the farmhouse and got help from a small stockade where the soldiers were quartered. Mrs. Jensen is able to point out the area where this historic event took place. She grew up here. She was born a few years later in the very house that was besieged by the Indians. Mrs. Jensen enjoys telling these people that she was born in this house 85 years ago. Many people receive a great deal of pleasure from horseback riding. These people in the St. James area have banded together to form the Watonok Saddle Club. There are more than 40 members, and the president is Oscar Olson. Color bearers are Henry Johnson, Bill D. Wall, and Oscar Olson. The members of the Watonok Saddle Club play intricate games of skill on horseback. This sort of fun is reminiscent of the old rodeo days. Occasionally, someone falls and gets a bump. The riders also run races on the fairground track. These contests are always exciting and competition runs high. Junior Sizer, riding Blondie, won the race on this particular day. The contests are run between members of the club solely for their own enjoyment. One of the purposes of this club is to teach the youngsters to ride well and to learn to care for their own moms. 
The club also participates in precision riding. Their flag drill displays the complete control they have over their mounts. A little dust never bothers a true lover of horsemanship. If you like to ride, there's nothing like having your own horse. Members of the club find more enjoyment in riding together, and a keen competitive spirit exists between members. It's all in fun, though, and the riders find that their skill improves easily in this friendly atmosphere. After a hard day's ride on the trail, both the horse and rider are ready to return to the barn. It's a good, tired feeling, though, and only a true horseman can appreciate it. All the young ball players like to go to the Erickson Brothers Barbershop for their haircuts. They know that a haircut by either of the brothers will be fast and well done. Butch Coleman and Joe Misher know that there is more time left for playing ball when they get their hair cut at Erickson's. And they both know that there is a good game starting down at the corner lot. Jimmy and Raymond Rathman are typical of the boys who grow up in our town. They go to the local school, have chores to do around home, and sneak off to swim and fish when they get a chance. They like to run up to the top of the grain elevator and look over the town and surrounding countryside. They can watch the busy freight yard that means so much to our town. And they can see the familiar ice cream parlor, the park, and home. These boyhood memories of our town, their town, will stay with them through the years to come. They will always remember our town, St. James, Minnesota, U.N.